In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how you can make Hitori puzzles using the puzzle generator in PowerPoint. Now, the first thing you need to do is make sure you've got a completely blank slide. That means if you do have any text boxes or placeholders, make sure, make sure you delete them first. I mean, what we're going to do is make sure we're on the puzzle generator tab up the top. And then here we're going to choose our trim size. So you can choose any trim size here, but for this example, I'm going to do 8.5 by 11. And now we've done that, we're going to go puzzles and then we're going to go to Hitori. Now the first screen here you see is a game explanation or how to. This is a brief uh, text description of how to play the game or puzzle. You can edit the text by clicking in here and typing or deleting. And then if you want to include the how to, the game explanation, just tick this box here. If you don't, leave it blank and then click continue. Now our first option here is our color picker tool. And our first option with the color picker tool is to, ch is to choose the color for the header. Now typically if you're creating for KDP, you'll want this to be in a black or a shade of gray. I'm going to leave it on the default of black. The next option you have here is to change the color of the shaded cells. So this is in the solution grid. What color do you want the cells, uh, shaded cells to be? Um, now typically when creating for KDP again, you'd want this to be a black or a gray. I'm going to leave it on the black. And then you have the option here for the text shaded cells color. Again, this needs to be in contrast to the shaded cell color. So if you've got black here, I would either go with a white or very light shade of gray. But again, in this example, I'm gonna leave it on the default of white. Now our next option here is to choose the font for our header. Now you can choose any of the fonts you have installed in Office or any additional fonts that you've added in the export tool. I'm going to leave it on the default one here. You can select a size for your font and styling options. So if you want it bold or italic. Our next option here is to choose a title. Now this title will appear above every single Hitori we make. So at the moment it's grid. So you have grid one, grid two, grid three, grid four and so on. You can of course translate it, change it to Hitori or leave it completely blank. It's completely up to you. Our next option we have here is to start our numbering app. Now typically in most circumstances you'd want this on one, but say for example, you created 20 puzzles and then you thought, actually I want to do another 20. You could change this to start the numbering at 21. So then it will continue your grids and do grid 21, grid 22, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Our next option here is our page number. This is how many pages worth of puzzles do we want to create? I'm gonna do five for this example. Our next option here is our grid dimensions. Now typically the larger the grid, the harder the puzzle will be and it will take a little bit longer to create. So I'm gonna stick with four by four for our example. Our next option here is how many grids by page do we want? So this is how many puzzles do we want on each page? Uh, note that the amount you choose here will mean you'll get the same amount of solutions. So if you do two grids or puzzles per page, you'll get two solutions per page. Four puzzles, four solutions, six puzzles, six solutions. So for this example, I'm going to choose six. Now our final option here, which is uh, very useful if you are creating for KDP, is to add a left and right margin. Now typically um, I do 0 0.75, but you can choose anything between zero and one. Now we've got our settings, we're going to click OK to create our puzzles. Okay. 
as you can see, we've got our puzzles here and our solutions. Now this is the, the black and the white shading, the colors we chose in the settings and the solutions. Now what you can do once you've uh, created your puzzles, we've got some more advanced formatting options that you might find useful. For example, we have our grids here and you may think, well, actually, I want them to be a bit closer in together. What you can do is to select them all like this, put in a distance here, say 0.4, and then you can choose a direction to move them. So you're up, down, left, or right. Let's go right. And then if I do the same on this side, but this time to the left. Now what this does, it will apply this all the way through your puzzles, like so, and on your solutions as well. So you only need to make the change on one slide. A final um, extra formatting option you may find useful is to change the fonts or the sizing. For example, once you've created your puzzles, you might think, well, actually, uh, my title is a little bit too small. I want to make them bigger. So what you can do is select them here, like so, and then click change individual fonts here. And you have the option to choose a color, change the font the sizing, let's do 26, um, bold, italic, underline, and you can change the alignment as well. So once we've done that, click OK. And then what we're going to do, just because they're overlapping the grids a little bit, let's move them up 0.2, like so. And as you can see, as you go through, it applies your changes to all of your puzzles and your solutions as well. Now what I want to show you is the bulk import and export um, tool. What this will do, this will allow you to have a custom amount of puzzles and solutions per slide. Like at the moment, as you might have saw, as you might have seen, we're restricted to six. But what this tool does, this will give you a greater flexibility to the amount you can choose. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna delete all of our slides here. We're gonna tap to add a blank first slide. We're gonna delete our placeholders here. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to choose a trim size and then we're going to choose a square trim size. So I'm going to go for 8.5 by 8.5 here. And then we're going to go puzzles. And then Hitori. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to take off our left and right margin. And then we're going to choose dimensions. I'm going to do 6 by 6. And then we're going to change the grids by page to only 1. And then I'm going to create, say, say 40 puzzles. And once we've got our settings, we'll click OK. Then what we're going to do once our puzzles are created, we're going to go up the top here and click Export Slides as PNG. Now, first of all, we want to select just our puzzles. So we're going to do 1, 2, 40. Type in puzzle. Going to keep the quality and resolution the same. And then we're going to create a folder here. And in that folder, a new one called puzzles. Click OK. And now we've exported our puzzles, we're going to do our solutions. So again, export slides as PNG. This time, our first slide is going to be 41. Type solution in here. Again, keeping the quality and resolution the same. And then we're going to go to that same folder. Create a folder in here called solutions. And then click OK. Now, once that's done, what we're going to do, we're going to delete all our slides again down the side. We're going to tap to add a first slide. 
I'm going to delete our placeholders again and then make sure we're on the puzzle generator tab again. We're going to choose a trim size for our KDP book. So I'm going to go for 8.5 by 11. And then what we want to do, we want to go up here again to bulk import images. And we want to make sure we're in the folder we just made. And then we're going to go to our puzzles first. Click OK. Now, as you can see here, the tool gives you a lot more flexibility as to the amount of puzzles you want to have per page, all the way from one up to 20. In this example, I'm gonna do eight. Here we have the option to add a title above each image. As we have our titles already, I'm gonna delete that to leave it blank. And then down the bottom here, we have the option to set minimum margins and spacing. I typically leave this on the default and tick the box to attempt to optimize spacing. This is because it tends to have the best results uh, keeping the puzzles tightly knit together. So once you're happy with your settings here, click OK. Then as you can see, I have my eight Hitori puzzles per page. And then what we want to do is Go back to bulk import images, this time choosing our solutions. And then we can change how many images or puzzles you want per slide again. You don't have to have the same amount of puzzles that you chose for the puzzles. You can choose any, any number you want. So for this example, I'm gonna do 20. Again, keep everything else exactly the same and click OK. And so there we have, we have our 20 solutions on a slide and our eight puzzles on a slide. Now I hope this quick introduction to the Hitori feature of the puzzle generator helps you get started. Thank you for watching.